G'day everyone, Dominic here again from Gimbal Productions, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to create an ultra realistic Spider Man effect. This tutorial is aimed at beginner users of Blender and After Effects, so I'll make sure I go into enough detail so that you'll end up with a high quality end result. So let's get started. When I was making this tutorial, I was using Blender 3.3.0, After Effects 2024, and also the 2023.2 version of Cascadeur. Now, Cascadeur is not required for this tutorial, but I feel it makes a higher quality end result. To begin, you'll obviously need some footage. I planned for Spider-Man to land in this alleyway, but then the camera would cut closer to him standing up. So as you can see, I recorded two separate clips using very carefully controlled camera movements. The careful camera movement is important as we'll be tracking the camera in After Effects. For the effect, I made use of AE to Blend, a paid Blender plugin that allows you to camera track inside After Effects, then import that camera track inside Blender. To begin, drag and drop your clip into After Effects to create a new composition. Right click on this clip, then choose Track and Stabilize, then Track Camera. Upon selecting this, you should see a 3D camera tracker effect appear in the effects panel. And across your footage, you should see a large blue banner telling you it's analyzing the clip. After a few minutes, this blue banner will turn orange and then disappear. Click on the 3D camera tracker effect inside the effects panel. And upon doing this, you'll then see all these tracking markers appear over your footage. Click and drag a number of these tracking points where Spider-Man is going to be landing. Right click this selection, then choose set ground plane and origin. Right click again, and then choose create solid and camera. Upon doing this, you should see a colored square appear on your footage and also a camera inside the timeline. Playing through the clip, you should see that this colored square is now tracked onto the ground of the footage. To save me some time later, I'm going to open the transform properties, then adjust the scale and rotation of this square to fit a larger portion of the alleyway. This part doesn't have to be perfect, you're just trying to make it fit that part of the scene where Spider-Man's going to land. At this point, we've pretty much set up everything that we need, so let's open up Blender. Create a brand new general document inside Blender, then press A on your keyboard, then press delete to remove everything from the scene. Click on edit at the top left hand side of your screen, then choose preferences. In the add-ons tab, we can then install AE to Blend. You can enable it by clicking on the little tick box. The plugin should appear as a panel inside your Blender viewport. Expand on this. Now you can see some of the options. We're going to start by creating a plane. Switch back into After Effects, then click on the Track Solid 1 layer. Open the Transform Properties, then Control click on Anchor Point, Position, Scale and Orientation. Press Control C to copy these keyframes into your clipboard. Now back to the Blender plugin, all we have to do is click Create Plane. The plane will now appear in your Blender scene. Next, we'll do the camera. Switch back to After Effects, then drop down the Transform Properties for the camera. Control click on Position and Orientation, then press Ctrl C to copy the keyframes to your clipboard. Back in the Blender plugin, press Create Camera. Drag up your timeline, then drag all these keyframes up by one frame. If you don't do this, the track will be out by one frame compared to your footage, so we don't want this. If you follow these steps, the camera track will now be imported into Blender. The last thing we'll need to do though, is make sure the Blender camera has the same focal length as the camera inside After Effects. If we switch back and forth between these programs, you may notice that your Blender camera might be more zoomed in. So, double click on the layer of the camera inside After Effects. Copy the focal length value, then go back into Blender and open up the camera settings. Now, change the focal length to match the one of the After Effects camera. Now your After Effects track and your Blender track look exactly the same. For the two building walls, I went back into After Effects, then added a new solid using the 3D camera track from before. I selected that area, then right clicked, then chose Create Solid. Using the Transform properties, I adjusted the scale so it fit the wall a bit better, then I copied those previous keyframes from before. Again, those were Anchor Point, Position, Scale and Orientation. Then I went back to the Blender plugin, then pressed Create Plane. I then repeated that process, but this time for the other wall. For this next step, we're going to be importing the same clip that we had in our After Effects document into our Blender's camera. To do this, go to the camera settings of the Blender camera. 
then choose Background Images. From here, choose Movie Clip, then select the file that you use for your After Effects document. In the Background Images options, make sure Opacity is set to 100%. We'll switch over now to the Render Properties tab, then change our render engine to Cycles. From here, make sure your GPU is enabled. Next, in your Output Properties tab, make sure your Blender Scene matches the resolution of your clip. I'll switch back to my Blender camera, then adjust the clip end settings inside the camera setting menu. I'm changing this to a higher value, that way the camera can see further into the distance. Before continuing, make sure you change your transform orientations from global to local. I'm now going to be adjusting the planes that are on these walls. To do this, press shift spacebar, and that brings up a whole bunch of transform options. You will switch between the scale, move, and rotation tools to better match these planes onto the actual walls of the scene. As a quick tip, if you select the plane, then press S, followed by one of these axis buttons, you can scale the plane on that specific axis. For example, if I pressed S, followed by Y, I'm able to scale it on the Y axis of the plane. My right wall looks pretty good, so I swap to the left. Again, press Shift Spacebar to bring up these transform tools. Since I know Spider-Man's not going to be interacting with these walls, I don't have to be super precise. I'm just trying to line it up more closely to match that of the wall in the footage. Lastly, repeat all these same steps, but this time for the ground plane. So, scale it up so it fits the area in which Spider-Man is going to be landing upon. To better match the corners of the wall, switch over into edit mode, then click on one of these corners. Press G, then press the appropriate axis key. Moving your mouse now, this will allow you to line it up with the wall corners. At the end of this, this is what my blender scene looks like. Again, it's not supposed to be super precise, as these walls aren't interacted with by Spidey. There are countless free to download Spider-Man models online, especially on the website called Sketchfab. Making use of the Sketchfab Importer plugin for Blender, as you can see here, I can copy and paste this URL, go back into Blender, then inside the Sketchfab Importer plugin, I can press Import from URL. The benefit of using the Sketchfab Importer is that all these models will load in with all the textures already applied. The only downside to a free model is that they're not always the highest of quality. For this project, I purchased a high quality model of CG Trader. When zoomed up close, the high quality and realistic textures would greatly help me make an ultra realistic end result. I should stress, there's no requirement for you to purchase a model yourself. It just depends on your end visual goal. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps me grow out my channel. I'd also like to shout out to my subscribers so far for supporting me throughout all my creative endeavors. This content takes hours to put together, but I do it all for you guys. Regardless of where you source your model from, we're going to be uploading it to Mixamo.com to both rig and animate it. Following the prompts, uploading and rigging this model will take only a few minutes. All you have to do is follow all the on-screen instructions. Just make sure that you choose the standard skeleton preset. If you run into any skeleton issues during the upload process, I would recommend going back into Blender and importing the model of your choice. Then, export it as an OBJ file from the File Export menu. This new file should upload without issue, however, we'll have to relink the textures a bit later. For my animation, I downloaded three files, a T-Pose, a Stylish Flip, and also the Front Twist Flip. You don't have to use the ones I did, but I thought I'd just tell you what I used. Click on the animation of choice, then choose Download. Make sure your FPS matches that of your footage, and also choose With Skin. You can still produce a high quality result just by using these Mixamo animations alone. The only problem is, they can be quite short. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I also made use of the animation program Cascadeur. This allowed me to blend multiple Mixamo animations together to create a more complex swinging scene. If you want to just use the Mixamo animations, skip to the time that you can see on screen. Otherwise, I'll show you my optional Cascadeur process. Inside Cascadeur, choose File, Import FBX, then choose Model. Now import your T-Pose model from Mixamo. Follow the on-screen prompts to turn your Mixamo rig into a Cascadeur rig. On the top left side of the viewport, change your viewing mode into Joint Mode. Now use your mouse to select all these joints. Now choose File, New Scene, and click and drag the jumping animation into this empty viewport. Swap it again into joint mode and then select all the joints. 
Next, with all the keyframes in the timeline, hold shift click to select them all, then choose Edit, Copy Interval. Switch back to the T-Post tab and select a number of keyframes on the timeline where you'll paste this data. Choose Edit, Paste Interval. We have now mapped the animation to the T-Pose mesh. You're going to repeat that process one more time, but this time with the swing and landing animation. You will paste these keyframes after the jumping animation. Just make sure to extend your timeline if needed. Great, so now we've mapped these animations to the same mesh. But there's a bit of a problem. They don't flow into each other. To fix this, select all the keyframes from the jumping animation. Just above the timeline, choose the Interval Edit tool and switch your viewing setting to Auto Pose. By clicking on the blue cross inside the mesh, you'll be able to move all these keyframes into a different position. The goal here is to line up the end of the first animation with the start of the second animation. The ending of the first animation though, ends with the character landing, so I don't want this. So I'll be removing some of these keyframes to better line up the falling animation from the jump into the start of the swing. In the timeline, I select all the keyframes of the landing part of the first animation then press Alt F twice to remove all these keyframes. By flicking back and forth between this new end frame and the start of the swinging animation, you can see what I'm trying to do. If I shift click and select the end frame and the start frame of the second animation, and then choose the Bezier Curve tool, these two frames will now tween together seamlessly. The swinging portion of the animation goes slower than I intended. So if I select all these keyframes at the end, then hold my middle mouse button, I can drag these keyframes forward on the timeline. And as you can see, that creates a more naturalistic effect. If your character goes a bit wonky during this transition period, you can add new keyframes by pressing F on your keyboard. The posing tool inside Cascado is quite easy to use. By pressing Shift Z to turn these joints blue, you'll be able to pose them with ease and put them into a correct position for the animation. After manually posing just one keyframe, this now fixes all the issues I had from before. I'm going to fix one more animation fault in this scene. Playing through my keyframes, I can see that the hands don't stick to the ground properly. So, what I can do is open up the scene settings in the timeline. From here, I can remove all these unwanted keyframes of the hands sliding around. Select the keyframes, then press Alt F twice. Then, all these keyframes are removed. I'd also recommend adding one keyframe just at the end of this portion, so the hands remain stuck in that position. Now, I can minimize all these tabs in the timeline. To create the standing movement, I found this one keyframe where Spider-Man landed on the ground. If I hold Alt and then the middle mouse button, I can drag and duplicate this keyframe into a later point in the timeline. I can now adjust the timing of these keyframes, but also use manual pose mode to articulate Spider-Man into a standing position. Again, just make sure you use the Bezier Curve tool to blend these keyframes together seamlessly. Since Spider-Man does not travel in a straight line in my scene, I'm going to use the Interval Edit option once more, but this time with the Rotation tool. That way I can articulate the path in which Spider-Man travels. I make it so his jump is at a slight angle, but when he starts swinging, he travels in a straight line at the camera. In under 5 minutes, this is what my final animation sequence looks like. Once you're happy with your animation, choose File, Export FBX, Scene. If you think this part of the project is a bit overwhelming, don't worry, I've included the Cascado project file for you to download for free. You'll be able to map it to your mesh, just like the Mixamo animations from before. Before we begin, download the free Blender add-on, Blender Kit, from my video description. This will help out in just a moment. Back in Blender, select one plane, then choose the Object Properties tab. Go down to Visibility and enable Shadow Catcher. Do this for the remaining planes. Go back to the first plane and add a new material in the Material tab. Choose Base Color, then use the eyedropper to select a color from the wall. Repeat that process two more times for the remaining planes. Swapping to the Rendered view will show you a scene that looks like this. But if we go into the Render Properties tab and go down to the Film section, we can enable Transparency. Now you'll be able to see the background image, but no planes. I'll now swap back into the Material Preview mode to import my animation. In this viewing mode, you'll be able to see those planes that you just set up. Now choose File, Import FBX to import your animations. After you import your model, press S on your keyboard, then move your mouse. That way, you'll be able to scale it up to a size that fits your scene. You can use those transform tools from before by pressing Shift Spacebar. 
you'll need to align the landing frame into its position. So, use the rotation tools, the movement tools, as well as the scale tool to best align him in his landing position. On the landing frame, turn on auto keying. Now add keyframes for the location of this model. Scrubbing through the timeline now, if you move the model around, this will add an automatic keyframe. By doing this, I can have Spider-Man start off the animation further in the distance. I can also adjust the arc of the swing. And since my keyframe for the landing frame is already done, it ensures he'll land in the right position. Remember, you can always undo a keyframe if needed. And after a few minutes of tweaking, my final animation swing sequence was now complete. With the bone selected, I swapped over into pose mode. Here, I was able to articulate a number of keyframes to open up Spider-Man's fingers into that classic web swinging hand gesture. I firstly removed a whole bunch of keyframes from the timeline. That way the hand gesture will now seamlessly fit into the existing animation. Swapping back now into the rendered view, you'll now have a more finalized product. However, I still need to relink the textures from before. Open another Blender window from your taskbar and import your textured model. After it's imported, choose Edit, Preferences, and in the Add-ons tab, type in Material Library. Now, if you go to the Material options in Blender, you'll now find a Material Library subheading. By clicking on your model's mesh, then choosing Add to Library, this will copy the material into this new Material Library. Do the same thing for all other elements of your mesh. This should only take about a minute. Close and reopen your animation document. After doing this, you can highlight parts of your mesh, then add a new material. By going down to the Material Library tab, you can now reapply these textures without issue. With all the textures relinked, there's only one more thing to do, and that's adding a HDRI image to light our scene. Using the Blender Kit add-on as I mentioned before, we can now add in a HDRI image that will apply a lighting effect across the entire Blender scene. Now in a professional setting, you'd have to capture this HDRI image yourself. However, by using Blender Kit, you can instantly import HDRI images from the internet. Find a HDRI image that matches the environmental lighting of your scene. Since I recorded this on an overcast day, I found a HDRI image that reflected that. In the World Settings tab, if you go into the Color, then the Mapping section, you'll be able to rotate the HDRI image to match the lighting direction of your original recording. Remember those planes that we coloured and turned visible from before? We can use this to actually bounce light back onto the model itself. As you can see here, by adjusting the colour, the Spider-Man model is now reflecting that colour that's bouncing off the wall. You can also adjust the ground plane to better suit the lighting conditions of your scene. Making the ground plane dark will intensify the shadows at the base of Spider-Man's model. Okay, since that's all done, I think I'm about ready to export my file. Choose the Output Location in the Output Properties tab, and in the Rendering tab, I dropped my render samples to 100 to make it a bit quicker. You can choose to denoise your image here if you so wish. I also enabled Motion Blur to get a more naturalistic image at the end. If you'd like to render your shadow layers separately, you can choose Holdout inside the Object Properties tab. Now you can render the scene without the shadow catch on the floor being visible. You can also do the opposite. If you set all your Spider-Man mesh objects to Holdout 2, you'll now have a shadow only pass. This is definitely not the only way to do this, but it is just a quick option. Now at the top of your screen, choose Render, Render Animation. Back inside After Effects, delete the camera and solids. You'll no longer need them. In the Project panel, right click then choose File, Import and choose the first frame of your render. Just make sure PNG Sequence is enabled. Right click the highlighted file once more then choose Interpret, Main. From here, make sure your FPS matches that of your footage. Now drag and drop it into the timeline. Now you can play through the footage. Using the pen tool, I made a mask around the building to make it look like Spider-Man was jumping from behind it. I manually keyframed its position in order for it to align with the footage. To create the web, I made this long white canvas inside Photoshop and exported it as a PNG. I aligned it to the frame in which I want Spider-Man to shoot the web. I then keyframed its rotation and position. Using the puppet pin tool, I added several pins across the image. I then manually keyframed it moving forward out of Spider-Man's wrist. I would do this frame by frame to line it up with the footage. I repeated all the steps outlined in this video, but this time with the standing scene. To finalize it all, I made a few color edits, keyframed faked camera movements, and lastly, some film grain to create this final effect.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one.